Okay, welcome to the next video where we're talking about putting the uh, Lakeside Focus motor on a Takahashi uh, FSQ106. The, the process is exactly the same whichever telescope you're putting it on. It's effectively just a bracket and the fixing is different. Um, but the whole process and setup is essentially the same. So in the previous video we went through the mechanical um, installation of the, the Focus control motor. You'll note in the video uh, that I actually mentioned putting the bolts to the um, D-type connector upside down and you'll see in the picture here exactly why I suggested that because they are very close and you end up with trouble getting the, um, the plug on. So the first thing that you need to do before we do all this, um, the setting up, is that you need to know how long your focus travel is. Now some focuses have increments drawn on the side printed on the side. Uh, the Takahashi doesn't but I, I've measured it and you may need to measure your focus so to get it quite exact so you just wind your focus all the way out to the extended position and then you can measure or look at the increments and see exactly how far uh, it extends and then write that measurement down because you will need that. I happen to know that the the tack is 30 mil I've measured that so when we do our calibration routine um, I'm going to set mine to 28 mil. You don't want the focus going all the way out to the stop because that can cause damage, particularly on a on a mechanical focus or a rack and pinion as opposed to a Crayford. So once we've got that done, we've connected the uh, the flat ribbon cable lead that comes with the Lakeside Focuser kit. Connected the controller uh, to a 12 volt power supply. When we switch on, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to test to make sure which direction the focuser runs in compared to the buttons because it's important that that direction's right. So when we push in, the focuser goes in. When we push out, the focuser goes out. So the power switch is on the top of the control unit. When it switches on, it will just come on to auto. Um, and the very first thing that we need to do, you'll see that when you push and hold the middle button, you'll go to manual presets and you just cycle through the menus. So the first thing that we want to do is just go on to manual and you'll see now that the display above the buttons changes to out and in. So if we just run the focuser out um, and when you start it's ideal to start with the focuser just out of it in case the direction's wrong. If it's hard up against the stop and the direction's backwards you push out and it goes in you could damage your focuser. So try to start with your focuser just out of it. So I'm going to run mine out. And I just want to make sure that the focuser travels out, which in this instance it does. And when I push my focuser in, it travels in. So that's fine, it does. If you find that it doesn't, what you need to do is go into the settings menu. So go to setup. We're not going to calibrate at this moment. And then you'll see the next one is directions. So you can reverse the directions there. You can change, yes. Um, and then that will just change the direction that the motor runs. For us at the moment, we're a no. So the very next thing that we need to do now is to go through the calibration routine. Now the calibration just tells the controller how far it is from all the way in to all the way out. So that the, the controller stops your focuser hitting against the stops at the ends. So we go to the setup menu and we're going to calibrate. So we click on yes. Now the controller is telling us to set the min minimum distance. So we're going to drive our focuser now in until we're just short of the stop in the inwards direction. Don't run it all the way to the stop. You just want to be about two millimeters short. So that's fine there. We're not all the way home, but we're quite close. So click set. Now it changes and says set maximum. So now is the important part where we measured the focus travel previously because this is where we're going to tell the focus controller to stop when it gets to the end of its travel. Now as I said my attack is um, 30 millimeters, so I've set my vernier gauge here to 28 millimeters. I'm just going to hold that up against it. You can do it with a tape measure, it doesn't need to be that accurate. As soon as I get out to 28 millimeters, that's it. I'm there. So what I do now? 
quick set and that's that the direction we're not going to change so the the calibration is now done on that I'm not going to change direction backlash now if you're using it with a focus controller you don't need to worry about that because the backlash compensation um, is done by the software that you'll be using step size now what this is for is um, to tell the controller the resolution of the motor so the maximum resolution of the motor on maximum number of counts that it can deal with is 65,536. It's quite a lot. Um, and there's 4,000 counts per revolution on the motor. So for a focuser that's got six and a half turns, and this is information from Lakeside, a motor a focuser that has six and a half turns, that will be 26,000 counts, which is quite high. I mean, it's fine, you can run with 26,000 counts, but sometimes it's better to have a number that's a bit more manageable, a bit more rememberable. So if you increase the uh, step size, instead of being 26,000, it will be 13,000. So play around with a step size and get it to a, a point that it suits you. Um, for the tack here, um, step size two is absolutely ideal. And you can see there, if I go back to manual, you can see the speed and it runs at is quite reasonable it's only a short focuser so all that happens now is once all that's done we're now calibrated we're ready to go on the next part i'll run over running the controller via the computer and software so sequence generator pro um, and hopefully that's been helpful for this part getting you up and running see you soon bye